Jennifer and thanks again for joining us on 3 The Smart Way. Today I'm coming to you from my office, taking a break from the kitchen to talk to you about making your own homemade baby food. I know people do this for a variety of reasons and you can tell by everything we talk about on this channel. Our primary effort is to do the smartest thing that saves you the most time and money as a mom or just as a general adult. <laughs> um, so one of those things that I came across after having our first little one was doing my homemade baby food. So I know there are a variety of reasons that people actually get into this. Um, and some are rather controversial, but I don't know if you remember a couple of years ago, there was a surge of these baby food pouches on the market. Like people were no longer doing um, the jarred baby foods. Everyone was doing a pouch. Um, but the one thing about the pouch was that you couldn't actually see what was coming out unless until it was already out of the pouch. And as a result, there were a lot of reports from varied different um, sources where there were things that were found in the pouch that were not actually edible or not considered um, quality ingredients such as mold and all kinds of nasty stuff that you would never in a million years want your little one to get a hold of. So that was actually what spurred me <laughs> to look into it just to see like is it easier or is it you know just one of these things that the granola moms do that's what I call them um although some granola moms might be watching this and saying hey we think a lot alike <laughs> and that's fine but I am not your typical granola organic do everything um I don't know I'm just not that mom I'm the quickest most efficient but most fun way of doing things is my typical approach so nonetheless um I did arrive on the doorstep of the idea of making my own homemade baby food and so I'll give you guys a quick journey um, because unfortunately there are not a lot of resources out there that put all of the research into one place um, like from beginning to end so hopefully this video will serve as that for a lot of you that are interested in going down this route but a little bit nervous about um, the proper steps you could take because just as though you may consider some of the ingredients that are you know in a bottle of jarred food are not exactly what you would want to be feeding your child you want to make sure that whatever is in your homemade version is exactly what you would want to be feeding your child if that's the reason that you chose this route anyway right so um like i said a multitude of reasons why people go down this road mostly um it's related to cost and controlling the ingredients um last i looked the cheapest you could get a jar of baby food about three or four ounces was about 50 cents that was not going to be organic that was going to have more than two or three ingredients on the back of it even if it was a single ingredient um, meal like sweet potatoes or green beans and that's just that's gonna be about 50 cents a jar you may go through a couple of jars a day if you do the math it does start to add up um, I have seen I've taken some notes here because there are some resources that I use to get me started on this and I wanted to make sure to share those with you so at 50 cents for a four ounce jar um, but then you compare it to, like, if you were just to do carrots for a week, <laughs> a bag of carrots would make you, I don't know, 25 lunches and 25 dinners, basically, for your child. Um, so that would be over a month of lunch and dinner of the same item, which I know we want to add a little bit of variety in there. We'll get to that a little bit later. But um, a bag of carrots is just $4.50. So... Um, it's drastic price difference. I have seen some shopping lists on Pinterest where they just buy nine fruits and vegetables um, from varied sources, frozen, fresh, 
even can be creative. Um, and that's giving them $20 worth of ingredients, but it's a whole month worth of baby food. So that is, there's no comparison if you're talking about jarred food or even versus the pouches that are on the market now. Some of the pouches that I've seen are upwards of $1.50 or $2 each. So <coughs> I know that doesn't sound like a lot. If we went to a drive through and bought a meal for $2, um, you know, we would consider it a steal probably. <laughs> but, you know, we do want the ingredients to be a little bit more pure and fresh and appropriate um, for the little ones, okay? So, if your little one is ready to start, um, there are a couple of indicators. Of course, check with your physician to make sure that um, your baby's ready to start. I know one of them is, you know, that they're not like thrusting their tongues forward when they're eating. Um, another is that they're sitting up straight. Talk that over with your physician um, on your regular visits and then you'll get a good idea when your baby may be ready for solid foods, okay? So there's one thing that I never heard of until I started researching this and it's called the Dirty Dozen. So the Dirty Dozen is 12 fruits and vegetables that have the most pesticides on them. Now this is, I'm gonna go granola mom for a minute. <laughs> But they have the most pesticides on them, which, of course, you don't actually want to be passing on to your little one. So these are the ones that you either want to, you can use this list to guide you while you're shopping. Um, you can also use this list to avoid um, those specific items. It's totally up to you. So I looked at this as if I wanted any of these 12 items, I was going to buy them organic or just try not to buy them. It's that simple. So those are your two choices, really. So the Dirty Dozen include strawberries, apples, cherries, tomatoes, spinach, peas, grapes, sweet bell pepper, nectarines, pears, celery, and potatoes. So those are the produce with the highest pesticide residues on them. Now, then they have like the Clean 15, which is like the exact opposite of that list, okay? So these are gonna be the cleanest um, fruits and vegetables for you to provide to the little one so they'll have the least amount of pesticides and residues on them. So that's sweet corn, avocados, pineapples, cabbage, onion, papaya, sweet peas, that's frozen sweet peas, asparagus, mango, eggplant, honeydew, kiwi, cabbage, cauliflower, and cantaloupe, okay? So the Dirty Dozen and the Clean 15. Just keep those in mind as you're choosing what you want to go forward with for your first couple of weeks of solid foods. Now, I will let you know, I take it easy. I know people think making your own homemade baby food, that's out of our time for that. It's the first thing everybody says. I don't have time for this. First thing I thought. The first thing that I would do is do everything in your in your willpower, your wheelhouse to make this as easy as possible. So the first week, the first couple of weeks, I did things that came out of the shell, came out of the peel, and were easily mashable with the back of a fork. That included bananas, that included avocados. There are a couple others. Those were the two that didn't require any produce prep, no washing, no peeling, no coring, no chopping, no boiling, no steaming, no, nothing, okay? Those you literally cut open, and also they're really easy to travel with. I know it sounds crazy, but <laughs> we, we traveled a lot when we had our first little one, and a lot of long car trips. I always just grabbed a couple of avocado, I mean, for Pete's sake, I live in Texas, so you can get avocado three for a dollar here. Um, so, and it would be really odd that, you know, a six month old would probably eat a whole avocado. They're probably only gonna eat half of it. So, hate to be wasteful, but chunk the other half is not that big of a deal. You know, you've gotten a 15 cent meal, essentially, um, out of a half an avocado packed full of nutrients. You didn't miss out on any of them because you didn't cook any of it. So um, for our car trips, I would grab the silverware packets 
<laughs> the plastic or silver wear packets um, from the fast food places with the fork and the knife and the spoon in them because you kind of need all three for an avocado. I would slice around the avocado, split it in half um, with the knife, then use the spoon to scoop it out into tiny little scoops and then I could also use the back of the fork to mash it up. I know it sounds crazy, but so easy to do in the back seat of a car and you literally don't even need a bowl to do it in because the the skin and peel of the avocado kind of do the work for you. Um so I would definitely say I relied on that one a lot. So take it easy, make your life as easy as possible. Also, try to introduce one food at a time. So one food for one week, then that lets you know if they have an allergy to it, then you roll on to the next food. You can always, then after you've included a couple of foods, you can start mix mixing them together, okay? So that's another option to like up the flavor profile. Honestly, when you think about Nobody ever said this to me, <laughs> and I wish someone had, because when you think about this baby food phase, because everything's a phase, okay? When you think about this baby food phase, they're only really eating purees for two to four, mm, two to six months, okay? So it's six months on average that is when babies are kind of starting to move towards solids, um, I have heard in some cases as early as four months, talk to your physician, but generally speaking, six months is when people are starting to start their babies on purees, and then by the time they're doing, by the time they hit 12 months, they're doing everything manually, like they're practicing dexterity. You want to put things out that they can pick up, grab, learn how to handle. So at 12 months, your puree phase is kind of over, to be honest. Um, never be afraid of doing too much because there's some amazing things that you can do with your purees after the fact. But anyway, so now you know what to get, what to maybe try to get organic versus non-organic and what to absolutely, you know, avoid if you need to. Um, so what my schedule was, was to sit in the evening, I would go do the shopping. Um, and then I would just make two or three foods. You don't have to do eight or nine at a time, especially when you're just getting started. Because remember, you want to do one thing for a week. So I know it might sound boring, but you need to figure out these food allergies. And if you give them six different things in the first week and then they have an allergic reaction, you have no idea which of those six was the culprit. And you by no means want to cancel out all six of the foods that you spent all week getting them comfy cozy with. Okay, so take it easy. One food a week. Um, and... You can worry about mixing them together a little bit later. Don't mix them together now. Also, just keeping in mind the food allergy thing. Um, <clears throat> so, also remember the less you cook them, the more you're preserving the goodness inside of them. So, think steaming, think simmering, don't think boiling um, when it comes to these uh, fruits and vegetables during the prep phase. So it's really simple. All you need is a blender. I know that there are things out there that are like, mm, you can do, you can steam and then it automatically moves it over to this jar and then it does the blending and then it automatically moves it up. You really don't need to go there. Um, I had a Ninja blender and I also had an immersion blender. I loved the immersion blender because it was all the prep without any of the cleanup time. So, um, Definitely lean toward the immersion blender if you're doing something in a jar or a pot that's already been prepped. Um, you also need ice cube trays and you need Ziploc bags. Um, just plain old freezer Ziploc bags. The Ziploc brand is actually BPA free if some of you guys are interested in that. So also a good um, option to keep in mind. So a blender, whether it's a food processor or an immersion blender, stick blender, whatever you want to call it, you need that ice cube trays. You need and get several ice cube trays because you'll want, you'll be surprised how much one apple or one carrot produces in forms of puree. So get as, you know, get at least four or eight of those um, and that'll give you the opportunity to make multiple things at once. 
Um, Ziploc freezer bags is the last thing. So if you're gonna make a lot at once, which I actually did, so that I didn't have to do this every Sunday, <laughs> I could do this, just do this one Sunday a month. Um, the trick is to use everything in your kitchen at one time. <laughs> so use your microwave, use your stovetop, use your oven, use everything you got. Um, for the stove, you can um, use do the apples and pears. Um, so you want to wash those, core, and cut those into slices. Remember, the smaller your pieces are, the quicker they are to cook. So the quicker they are to soften. So definitely try to chop things as small as possible if you're chopping before you're cooking. Um, and then you just simmer those until they're fork tender. That's the most you have to watch anything. Everything else... Um, what I also would do at the same time was that I would do a squash, a butternut squash, and a sweet potato. You can literally stab those with, uh, stab your sweet potato a couple times with a fork, throw it in the oven on 400 degrees, but with your um, butternut squash, half it, scrape out the seeds, turn it face, cut side down, and put that in the oven also. Um, for 400 degrees, 30 minutes. So those go in at the same time. They're done at the same time. Um, you can also do frozen peas. I know, like I said, most people are thinking, oh, I've got to shop from the fresh produce portion of the store. No, you actually do not. Um, you'll be surprised how many options there are now available to you. Even since I was doing this four years ago. There's so many more things available. Um, Trader Joe's has an awesome um, steaming bag, butternut squash. It's already cut, steamed, and cubed, I guess, whatever. Um, so it takes out all the prep work. You can also do things that are frozen like broccoli. Um, spinach is another great one to do frozen, and they've already taken care of most of that prep work for you. You can also do canned things like organic pumpkin um, around Halloween time. It always goes on sale. Grab an extra can, put it in the, you know, in the pantry for when you're ready to do this. So simple, so easy, like a dollar a can, but oh my goodness, that can is probably... It's probably 12 to 16, 12 to 14 ounces. And I mean, one ice cube tray, which I loved about the ice cube tray por proportionately, is that one cube is about an ounce. So you do know exactly, exactly about <laughs> how much you're actually feeding them, which is really nice because otherwise it's kind of a guessing game, right? Um, so anyway, have everything going. Microwave, um, stove and oven simultaneously. Um, once everything's cooked, individually place those items in the blender, the food processor, or the stick um, immersion blender. Um, and then once you, so if it's too thick, sometimes some things will be too thick and some things will be too thin. So to thin something that is too thick, thin something that is too thick, <laughs> You want to just add water or you can add some of the um, residual boiling fluid or simmering or steaming fluid that you had um, from when you were cooking it. Or if it's too thin, you can add, oh, also you can add breast milk. That was another thing that I started adding to it late, later. Um, the leftover breast milk, great to add in. If something is too thick, if it's too thin, you can also add in cereal or rice or any grain item that you have that you've already um, planned to introduce to your child. So after you have it the right consistency for you, and honestly, there's no such thing as a bad consistency because you can always add in a, little, a tad bit of water to thin it out if you want to later. Um, the main thing is to get like the thickness or get the get the smoothness that you want. Um, after you have that smoothness, that consistency, spread it into the um, ice cube trays, and then you just freeze it for three or four hours. Get you some Ziploc bags, uh, pop them out into the Ziploc bag, and. Make sure you label the bag. You'll be surprised how quickly things start to look exactly the same. Um, I remember one time I had sweet potatoes and carrots and I could not tell the difference um, between them. So 
Always label your the outside of your Ziploc bag and then you're ready to go. Um, when you get ready to use your frozen items, I I like to apply as little heat to it as possible because every time I think heat, I think mm, I'm losing a couple more nutrients and vitamins. It may not be that big of a deal in the grand scheme of things, but in my head, it made me feel a little bit better. So what I would do is I would actually um, take out a couple of cubes. Remember, one cube is one ounce, so one to one right there. Um, and I would put the cubes in a Tupperware container or a glass Tupperware, basically, and put it in the refrigerator for the next day. How much I needed for the next day would be in that Tupperware container, and I could merely just scoop out the cubes. This, the cubes start to melt just a little bit, which is perfect, because then you can kind of tell, oh, this is a whole cube, this is a whole cube, you know, it's not like all mush, it's not like a pile of mashed potatoes the next morning. It's still there. Um, and then you can, if you want to, microwave them. They only take about, I don't know, 20 to 30 seconds to microwave. Um, make sure you're doing it, you know, in a BPA-free container. You just want to continue to, like, stack these methods that are being helpful on top of methods that are being helpful. So, um... Just microwave for 20 to 30 seconds. Every microwave, of course, will be different. And then you're ready to go. Uh, some of my favorite methods of actually feeding, I'll show you, was this. It's It was a Nubby is the brand name. So I don't know if you can see that, but it's Nubby, N-U-B-Y. And I don't know if you can see, there's a little tiny hole right in the center of the spoon there and then this is a reservoir it's it's literally two pieces um you can fill this with exactly what you want um i had about five or six of these just daily in the refrigerator um defrosting overnight essentially is what i'm saying um when you get to the point where you're beyond the Tupperware, you don't need to do the Tupperware anymore. Just put them straight into this. Um, this is a great tool to get them started with eating because they get really interested in it. So I would just stick my cubes down in here. I pop the top back on it and put it in the refrigerator overnight. It would thaw and then I was pretty much ready to go. If it wasn't thawed in the morning, I would get a little Pyrex of warm water throw that in there and just let it thaw okay um loved this <laughs> you could just squeeze out it just made i don't know i i'm just about quick easy and clean and <laughs> it got rid of a lot of like the excess all over the place um I don't know. It just seemed like it was a godsend. I love it. I give this to every pregnant woman I know. Um, I know a bunch of people do make it. This was the only one out when I first had it. A bunch of people make it now. Boone makes one. Uh, but you're just looking for something that is squeezable. The reservoir is squeezable. And then it has this little teeny tiny hole that you can squeeze out. I would even put cereal in here as well. Um, you can do cream of wheat in here. There are a million options. Um, and then the opening is large enough that you can actually fit a full-size spoon basically in there to uh, get whatever you want to feed the baby inside the reservoir. So the Nubby um, Reservoir Spoon, <laughs> I don't know the name of it, but I'll put a link to it below. Um, you can get it at a couple places now. Loved that to get them started. And then once I got a little bit more comfortable, I actually did go with the pouches. Once he got older and he was eating a lot more. So um, these I actually just got off of Amazon. And I, they, I feel like they hold a lot. Um, the pouch itself is rather large. Um, it may hold about four ounces, but the best thing about these is, of course, they have the cap on them. So you just screw on and screw off the cap, just like a normal, um, pouch, but you don't have to worry about like, I've seen people fill up the nasal bulbs. Oh, to, <laughs> to 
to fill up a pouch, don't do that. Um, even if it's clean and it's never been used before, it's just a mental thing. Oh, it's just gross. These actually had a zipper bottom. So you can see that there's a zipper across the bottom here. So um, also there's a max fill line. Don't fill it past this point. I mean, what more do you need? So just fill, you can literally spoon in or pour in your puree, um, seal off the bottom of the pouch. You know, make sure you hear all of those clicks, definitely. And they're dishwasher safe and freezer safe. So if you wanted to use them even to freeze your foods in, maybe you had um, more puree than you had ice cube trays, you can definitely use these. Uh, BPA lead, PVC, latex, and phthalate free. 100% um, recyclable, made with natural ingredients. Shopnaturalgoodness.com. So there you go. Um, you don't want to microwave these, of course, but so easy for on-the-go feeding. So maybe it's a good idea to just fill up a couple of these in addition to your ice cube tray so that you have them accessible um, and throw them in the freezer too. If you know you're going to like a baseball game or something the next day, you can just go ahead and do your normal thing. Take, take one out of the freezer, just like you would your ice cubes, and throw it in the refrigerator for a while. Um, another thing that I loved, this is a great tool. I know everybody's pretty much familiar with it. I think it was nubby too. Yeah, it was nubby. Um, but this is a great thing to give them as you're prepping their food because <laughs> very often i don't know if you have an anxious baby that is hungry when they're hungry but um that's me in real life so i have no um i don't feel i i don't feel evil towards any baby that wants to eat what they want to eat because that's me as an adult <laughs> but uh these are great they're just um, little mesh pouches and you load them with a piece of, I mean, it's just a simple piece of fruit. You can do a cantaloupe, you can do, you can do anything, fruit, vegetable, whatever the case might be. Um, also, they're great for teething if you want to put something frozen in there that's not going to break apart. I will say they can get messy, so definitely throw a bib on the baby when you get ready to use these, especially if there's something juicy like an orange segment or something like that. Um, but these are great. And then they come with the little cap so you can grab one out of the freezer, throw it in your diaper bag and be gone for the day. So, um, I think that that was all my notes for today for you guys on homemade food. I know it's been a long video, but thanks for sticking with me. I tried to compile all the information that I had to go to several different sources to find into one location for you guys. Um, one more thing to mention is that the freezer things last for about three months your purees will last for about three months in the freezer in the refrigerator they last for about three days so it's okay to pull out a little bit extra especially we don't know how much they're going to eat you know these first couple of feedings um they're getting used to taste and they're getting used to texture so make it easier on yourself pull out maybe a little bit extra than what you think you might need um, um an average feeding i believe is two to three ounces per uh feeding and of course they kind of work their way up to that in the beginning um so pull out a little bit of extra remember one cube is about one ounce so count your cubes count your meals and be ready to um, go ahead and serve your homemade baby food. So I hope that this was helpful. And I hope that some of these tools you'll take advantage of um, to make your life easier along the way with this journey. And if you have any tips, tricks, things that you use that you love, because of course we'll be going through this again very soon with our little one, probably I guess in about a year. Um, so keep us updated on anything that you did that you loved or made life easy. And we look forward to seeing you again next week here on 3 The Smart Way. Don't forget to like and subscribe. We'll see you next time.